Hello and welcome to the environmental economics course. So the theme number nine considers uh, economic valuation of the environment or environmental impacts. So let me first start by motivating the theme by, by stating that um, or discussing that why monetary valuation of environment is needed in the first place. So of course it might seem rather vulgar to those who care about the environment or environmental impacts that uh, that we need to convert this uh, for example some environmental impacts of some project to to uh, monetary measures uh, however the practical argument is that uh, that often in the business we say that what gets measured gets managed and we saw in the previous theme of uh, cost benefit analysis that uh, that uh, if the environmental effects are not included in the cost benefit analysis, then it's very much possible that these environmental effects are completely ignored in the, in the decision and thereby the uh, projects that get implemented might have a detrimental environmental impacts. And this is the kind of mindset that we, we approach this environmental valuation that, uh, that often the purpose is not like uh, have some kind of um, uh, exact or ideal or or optimal uh, optimal value. Of course, very often in the if we talk about environmental quality or environmental impacts of some project, there is not some kind of market existing for this environmental uh, environmental uh, services. So there is not such kind of demand and supply that would uh, would uh, facilitate the. Uh, the market clearing process and some kind of market price for the environmental services. So therefore, always this kind of uh, uh, environmental valuation, or at least almost always, it is based on some kind of indirect uh, uh, inference on the on what is the in monetary value of the environmental service or environmental impact of some project. So, following the textbook of of uh, permanent all we can distinguish uh, four different categories of uh, environmental benefit and opposite of course, environmental cost. So first of all, there would be direct use values uh, that arise from the actual or planned use of environmental service. So think about, for example, some nature reserve or national park where it is possible to visit and enjoy the uh, this kind of uh, services of the of the nature reserve, you can relax. You can you can uh, um, wind down in the in the natural environment, and it can have also some kind of uh, health benefits for you if you are if you are regularly, for example, walking in a in a forest. So this kind of kind of uh, direct benefits of actually visiting a, a nature reserve would be uh, measured this kind of use values. So then if we move to the to the top of the right paragraph, there is option value. And uh, that relates to willingness to pay to guarantee the availability of this kind of environmental service in the future. So it means that even if uh, even if I have never visited certain certain nature reserve, uh, I might uh, I might uh, appreciate the option to to visit in some in some future point of time, even if I don't have any any specific uh, specific date in mind or any specific plan, but even this option that it is possible to 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 make this kind of visit, uh, then make some kind of at least some positive uh, positive value, at least potentially. Then below the option value, there is so-called quasi-option value. And uh, that's even a little bit um, uh, less direct. So, so it relates to willingness to pay to avoid an irreversible commitment to develop now, uh, given the expectation of future growth in knowledge relevant to the implications of development. So one example could be that uh, suppose that uh, some uh, power company is planning to build, uh, for example, um, wind turbines or, or, or wind, park power, wind power park in uh, nearby this kind of nature reserve. And currently it's not... Uh, not enough knowledge to to tell that uh, would this kind of development uh, uh, adversely affect this uh, this uh, nature reserve for for example perhaps uh, 
uh, migrating birds might be disturbed by, by wind turbines. So if there is not enough knowledge, then the possibility to delay this kind of decision to, to, to build or not to build, uh, um, at least in this specific location, might have also some kind of option value. So this is kind of perhaps somewhat related to this previous category of option values, but it's kind of uh, uh, this kind of possibility to delay this kind of making, making a decision or making a commitment at this point of time to learn more in the future constitutes this kind of quasi-option value. And finally, moving back to the, to the left paragraph, on the bottom of the left paragraph, there is also existing value, which arises from knowledge that the service exists and will continue to exist independently of any actual or prospective use. So an individual might uh, appreciate the fact that a certain nature reserve exists. Perhaps there is some kind of endangered species uh, that uh, that uh, are are located in this in this kind of nature reserve. So already the the fact that this kind of nature reserve exists, even if the individual doesn't plan or perhaps ever plan, and even even doesn't have this kind of any value for the option to visit there, even irrespective of all this kind of use values that an individual might appreciate that that this kind of uh, uh, this kind of environmental service exists. So this is then totally uh, unconnected to any kind of uh, direct use of this kind of uh, environmental service by an by an individual. So then, if we, if we take all these four together, then then the total environmental benefit or its its uh, uh, additive inverse environmental cost is the directly sum of these kind of four types of uh, uh, environmental benefits or environmental environmental costs. So of course, uh, um, if you think about then this kind of um, project valuation, like like uh, environmental cost benefit analysis, then also permanent. I'll note that uh, for some specific project and some specific individual, then uh, uh, some or perhaps even all of these four categories might be equal to zero. So for example, that uh, that some individual does not necessarily um, ever plan to to use some some. Uh, and or visit some nature reserve. So then, for example, direct use value, even perhaps option value might be equal to zero. And it's possible that all of them are, are, are zero. However, when we when we take into account all, all potentially affected individuals, then we should also, at least in principle, take into account or at least take into consideration all these four types of, uh, of uh, environmental impacts. So then the next question is that how do we then uh, then um, estimate these types of, of environmental benefits or environmental costs? And how do we particularly estimate their monetary values? So we can classify the approaches known in the, in the literature to two broad streams. Uh, the first one could be uh, called uh, revealed preference techniques which are based on observed choices or observed behavior of, of uh, individuals. Uh, here are three examples of those uh, methods. So there is the classic travel cost method that goes back to uh, Harold Hotelling's work in, in the late uh, 40s. Uh, then we can think of uh, hedonic pricing and then, then shadow pricing. So all of these, uh, these uh, Techniques, at, at least then, like uh, like a um, basic approach, I I discuss in the next video lesson. That would be nine B. And then in nine C, I I walk you through to the stated preference techniques, which uh, typically are based on some kind of survey responses, where where individuals then then uh, more directly or 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 indirectly. Uh, reveal something about their preferences based on these survey responses. So there is uh, one, one example is contingent valuation, and then there's uh, choice modeling, uh, which, which will be discussed in the video lesson 9C. 
So I should add, add that there is, of course, uh, more different types of uh, types of uh, uh, techniques, and I'm not going to go through uh, each and every method that exists in the literature. But uh, the purpose is to is to sort of um, um, uh, indicate these kind of types of approaches, uh, whether it's revealed preference or or stated technique, stated preference techniques. And of course, the choice also partly depends on on the objectives of the analysis. What is the purpose of the monetary valuation of the environmental services or environmental impacts? And what kind of uh, data might be available? And, uh, and and then of course, to some extent, it's also like like uh, uh, researchers uh, um, approach that does one trust more this kind of. Uh, uh, reveal preference techniques that rely on the observed behavior versus uh, stated preference that are, are more survey-based uh, methods. So I will continue with the discussion of the revealed preference uh, approaches in the next lesson. Thank you for the, for the attention and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.